uh, welcome to organic chemistry one uh, in organic chemistry one we look at compounds of carbon other than carbonates and hydrogen carbonates uh, there is unique property when it comes to carbon that uh, carbon atoms have the ability to bond to each other either forming a long chain or a ring that property of atoms of an element bonding to each other to form a long chain or a ring is referred to as catenation. Uh, because of the ability of carbon atoms to undergo catenation, carbon is able to form so many compounds as compared to other elements, and that's why some of these compounds we uh, look at them in organic chemistry one, others we look at them in organic chemistry two. Now, generally compounds of carbon are referred to as organic compounds and the simplest of those organic compounds we refer to them as hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are compounds made up of carbon and hydrogen only. We call them hydrocarbons. Now, hydrocarbons can be classified into three main classes. We have hydrocarbons known as alkenes. We have those known as alkenes. And we have alkynes. The main difference between these hydrocarbons is that when we look at alkenes, when carbon atoms are bonding to form a chain or a ring, all the carbon atoms are joined by a single covalent bond. So as carbon atoms bond to each other, either forming long chain or a ring, all the atoms in the chain or in the ring are joined by a single covalent bond. Such a hydrocarbon is referred to as alkene. In alkenes, when you look at the long chain or ring, the carbon atoms bonding, at least two of them, will have a carbon-carbon double bond. So it may be a very long chain, but at least two carbon atoms are joined through a carbon-carbon double bond. Whereas in alkynes, at least two carbon atoms in the chain are bonded through a carbon-carbon triple bond. Of course, the other carbon atoms will have single bond, but at least two of them have a carbon-carbon uh, triple bond that qualifies to be alkene. Al alkene sorry. Now, broadly, we can also classify hydrocarbons as either saturated or unsaturated. The difference here is when we talk of saturated hydrocarbon, those are hydrocarbons in which all the carbon atom in the chain or ring are holding or are bonded to the maximum number of hydrogen. Such hydrocarbons are referred to as saturated, and here alkenes are saturated hydrocarbons because when you look at alkenes, all the carbon atoms will be having the maximum number of hydrogen atoms bonded to each carbon atom. However, if any one carbon is bonded to less hydrogen, then we refer to that hydrocarbon as unsaturated. And here is where we have alkenes and alkynes. Because of the presence of a carbon-carbon double bond or triple bond in alkynes, they don't have the maximum number of hydrogen atom bonded to them, and therefore we classify them as unsaturated hydrocarbon. So alkenes are saturated because they have the maximum number of hydrogen atoms bonded to carbon, while alkenes and alkynes, because of the carbon-carbon double bond, they don't have the maximum number of hydrogen atom bonded to carbon atom 
and therefore we classify them as unsaturated. Now, how can you differentiate between saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon? One major difference is that uh, when we look at saturated hydrocarbon as compared to unsaturated hydrocarbon, saturated hydrocarbon usually burn with a non sooty flame. When they are burning, they don't produce a lot of soot, so they burn with non uh, sooty flame. While unsaturated hydrocarbon will burn with a sooty uh, flame. So when you take a can and ignite it, it burns producing no soot. But either alkene or alkyne, owing to the fact that they are not saturated, they are unsaturated, they produce a lot of soot when they burn. The other difference is that uh, when you add acidified potassium manganate 7, to, unsatur uh, to saturated hydrocarbon, uh, the acidified potassium manganate 7 remains purple. Remains purple. For unsaturated hydrocarbon, when you add acidified potassium manganate 7, it turns from purple to colorless. Turns from purple to colorless. Whether it's alkyne or alkyne, it's unsaturated. So you add acidified potassium manganate 7, it will turn from purple to colorless. The last way we can differentiate saturated and unsaturated hydrocarbon is using bromine water. When you add bromine water to saturated hydrocarbon, it will remain orange. Orange stroke yellow, depending on the concentration. However, when you add to unsaturated hydrocarbon, bromine water will turn from orange to colorless, orange or yellow to colorless, depending on the concentration. So those are three ways in which you can be able to differentiate whether a hydrocarbon is saturated, that is alkene, or unsaturated, that is alkene or alkyne. So you try to ignite it. If it's saturated, it will burn with a nano sooty flame. But if it's unsaturated, it will burn with a sooty flame. It will produce a lot of soot as it burns. When you add acidified potassium manganate 7 to a saturated hydrocarbon, it remains purple. But when you add to unsaturated hydrocarbon, it will turn from purple to colorless. And finally, when you add bromine water to a saturated hydrocarbon, it remains orange or yellow, but in unsaturated hydrocarbon, it turns from orange or yellow uh, to colorless.